The Kraft Foods Company presents the Great Gildersleeve. You're right. <laughs> it's the Great Gildersleeve, starring Harold Perry, brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company makers of a complete line of famous quality food products. Now let's see what Gildersleeve has on his mind. Arriving home rather late from the office, he finds dinner just about ready. There's a letter there for you, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh? Yeah. Oh, good evening, my dear. Hello, Auntie. Pardon me here while I... Uh... Let's go in and eat. Uncle, what is it? Yeah, what is it, Uncle? Huh? Invitation to some fool ball. Uncle, don't tear it up. Let me see it. Now throw it in the waste paper basket when you get through with it. I want things neat around here for a change. The Summerfield Historical Society invites you to attend its yesteryear ball. Saturday evening, March 30th, in the grand ballroom of the Summerfield Hotel. Come dressed as one of your ancestors. Oh, Uncle, what fun! Yes, yes. Admission, $5 per couple. Oh. Proceeds to provide funds for renovation of the old Apted mansion. Uncle, aren't you going? I should say not. But why? Make a monkey of myself in some clown suit? No, thank you. But you're not supposed to wear a clown suit. You're supposed to go as an ancestor. In a monkey suit. Yeah. <laughs> Our ancestors were not monkeys, Leroy. Not recently. Who were they, anyway? Who were who? Our ancestors. Our ancestors? Well, they were people. Good, worthy people, I dare say. Some of them quite distinguished, no doubt. As a matter of fact, I don't know a great deal about them. Francie's always boasting about her ancestors. She claims they were all rich. I wish I knew more about mine. I'd like to put her in her place. It doesn't matter who your ancestors were, my dear, as long as you're something. Now, in my own case... Uh, you know me as your uncle. It probably does not occur to you that someday I shall become an ancestor. When? Let's not rush it. <laughs> but when I am, when that time comes, I shall probably be remembered not for what I am, but for what I've accomplished. How do you mean? Well, you go wash your hands, Leroy. Don't ask so many questions. If you want to find out about your ancestors, Marjorie, write to Aunt Matilda. She's the family historian. She knows all about that nonsense. I don't put any stock in it myself. Well, kids, what'll it be this evening? How about a good game of rummy? Marjorie, game of rummy? I have to finish this letter. Letter? Who are you writing to? Aunt Matilda. Oh? <laughs> Give her my love. Well, Leroy, I guess it's you and I, then. Tell you what, I'll trim you at a game of checkers. Sorry, Uncle, I have to do my homework. What a family. Everybody's got to do something. Well, I suppose I could read a book. <laughs> what do you know? I'm just going to read a book. Is there anything so remarkable about that? You never read books. I never get time, that's why. As a matter of fact, reading is my favorite pastime. Favorite pastime. Yes, sir, books are a man's best friend. Just a quiet evening with a good book. I don't know a better way to pass the time. I wonder what Leela's doing. I thought you were going to read, huh? How can I read when you keep talking to me? Uh, I think I'll go out and get some air. Leela, what you doing? Well, to tell the truth, Rock Martin, I'm just a teensy bit put out with you. But as long as you're here, come in. Thanks. Uh, what are you mad at me about, Leela? Just throw your coat on the chair there, anyway. I have a fire going in the living room. Great. Uh, by George, there's nothing like an open fire. I was just telling the children, there's nothing I'd rather do than sit by an open fire and read. The books are on the shelves there. Help yourself. <laughs> I mean, when there's nothing else to do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> Leela, why are you mad at me, huh? I've been sort of expecting I might hear from you, Throck Martin, but I haven't. Well, I've been terribly busy, Leela. I'm sorry. Judge Hooker hasn't been too busy. He's invited me to go to the yesteryear ball with him. Leela, you're not going with that old goat. Well, I haven't decided. I got a number of invitations. I shall probably go with the gentleman whose costume goes best with my own. Costume? What are you wearing? I'm going as my great-great-grandmother, Delacy. Your great-great... Oh, when she was a young girl, of course. Uh-huh. She was a great belle in New Orleans. Oh? She was part French. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, French, eh? Mm-hmm. Say, that ought to be all right. Oh, you should just see the gown I'm wearing, Throckmorton. <laughs> I hope you won't think it's too wicked. <laughs> it has a hoop skirt and all, and then I wear one of those beautiful white powdered wigs and a little black beauty patch to make me fascinating. <laughs> I think I'll go to this ball. <laughs> oh, I love costume balls, don't you? Love them. <laughs> oh, you should see the judge's costume. He has the most wonderful ideas. The judge? What's he going to wear? A pair of horns and some goatskin breeches? Silly. You know that portrait that hangs over his fireplace, General Thaddeus Hooker? He's known as a revolutionary general. Wouldn't it be perfect with my costume? Oh, don't go with him, Leela. Go with me. But I shot a promise, Rock Martin. Besides, I wouldn't want to go with somebody who's going to be dressed like a, a policeman or a water commissioner or something unromantic. Listen, I'll be as romantic as anybody there. Well, I don't know. Did you ever have any ancestors, Throckmorton? <laughs> Did I ever have any ancestors? Did I ever have any ancestors? I don't know, but I'll find out. <laughs> As your family started to hanker for something just a little different from the food you've been serving all winter long, then one answer to your problem is a rich golden cheese sauce made the easy way with smooth-melting Velveeta. Those vegetables you urge the folks to eat, they're different and delicious, topped with a glorious Velveeta sauce. And Velveeta's rich yet mild cheddar cheese flavor puts new life into Lenten main dishes, too. It's grand on fish, seafood, eggs, and macaroni. Even leftovers can be glamorized into smacking good main dishes with Velveeta. What's more, this delicious cheese food supplies high-quality, complete protein and other valuable milk nutrients. And it's digestible as milk itself. Don't forget, Velveeta is swell for snacks and sandwiches, too. It slices and spreads to perfection. Just be sure to get the genuine Velveeta... For it's the cheese food of craft quality. Several days have passed. Gildersleeve has decided to stop in at the public library on his way home from the office. Here you are. You'll find what you want in this book. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Ah, here. Alonzo Sherman Gildersleeve, 1875 to 1916. Merchant trader. Importer of spices and guano from the South Sea Islands. <laughs> Traveler, adventurer, and author of the book, The Language of Papiti. <laughs> I wonder how Alonzo learned the language. Yeah, South Seas, eh? Yeah. <laughs> what does that mean? Handsome white man repeat after pretty native girl. Oh no ma to po ia. Oh no ma to po ia. That means I love you. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, honey. Say, how's to run and get me another coconut full of that papaya juice, huh? Can't seem to get out of this hammock. And light me a cigar before you go. Pretty native girl love to wait on handsome white man. White man stay there now. White man don't go away. Here. Native girl think white man crazy? 
So this is the life. Oh no, ma, to poia. Hmm, pretty. <laughs> Wonder if I should put on a necktie for dinner. Guess not. Wouldn't look like anything without a shirt. <laughs> Come down. Oh, back already? What service? See? Pretty native girl bring beautiful flower for behind white man's ear. <laughs> I've already got one behind the other ear. <laughs> oh, well, what do I care? I'm up to my ears and flowers. <laughs> That's a joke, honey. White man lie. White man lie, pretty native girl. I'll say. Uh, but tell me something. Don't you, um, don't you girls ever get cold? Here it is never cold. Oh, that's good. Here it is the land of the lotus blossom. Here it is the land of beautiful music and love. <laughs> but hush, I think I hear a sound. A sound? In the distance. Perhaps it is the drum of my father. Uh, pop out looking for you, is he? Shh. Listen. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, miss. My elbow, the book slid off onto the floor. <laughs> well, I guess old Alonzo did all right for himself. <laughs> but those South Sea Island costumes. I don't think I'd be much in a grass skirt. <laughs> See what else there is here in this book. Uh, J. Whitcliffe, the eldest lady. 1854 to 1902. Financier. Controlled banks. Railways, steamship companies, art collector, and philanthropist. Hmm. Didn't know I had financiers in my family. Wonder what became of Wycliffe's money. Uh, good afternoon, Snodgrass. How's the market today? Mr. Jones, the market's going crazy. Yes, I know that's not grass. Let me have the details. Well, Amalgamated is selling at $560 a share. Uh, buy another 1,000 shares from my account. I must control Amalgamated. 1,000 shares it is. Uh, make a note of that, not grass. How many times have I told you to make a note of everything I say? Yes, sir. Chief must control Amalgamated. Any other developments? Wall Street is tottering. Your competitors are begging for mercy. Yeah, let them beg. Yes, sir, let competitors beg. Let Wall Street totter. No, totter. No matter what happens, Jay Whitcliffe Gildersleeve will come out on top. Oh, you say that. <laughs> Anyone waiting to see me? Anyone of importance, I mean, of course. Well, then... You know my rules, Snodgrass. I won't see anybody that's worth less than a million in cash. Who is it? Mr. Jabez R. Hooker would like to see you. Hooker? That old goat. Hooker's the man I'm driving to the wall, Snodgrass. When I get through with Hooker, he won't have money to ride in one of his own horse cars. Well, I... Uh... Make a note of that. Horse cars. <laughs> well, I believe Hooker wants to see you about borrowing some amalgamated stock. I won't loan him a single share. I'm driving him to the wall. Do you understand? Yes, sir. I'm telling you. Uh, anybody else to see me? Your children are here waiting for their regular visit. Oh, yes. The children. Give them two minutes. What else? Miss, uh, LeVere is waiting. Uh, Miss LeVere? Uh, I'll see you right away, Snodgrass. Uh, no, i better take the children first and get them out of the way. Yes, Mr. Gilly, see you. Our children, your father will see you now. Thank you. That'll be all, Snodgrass. Good afternoon, Father. Uh, good afternoon, Marjorie. Good afternoon, Peter. Uh, good afternoon, Leroy. You may be seated, children. Thank you, sir. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, now... Tell me the progress of your studies with your tutor. Uh, Marjorie first. That's right. During the past month, I've made rapid progress in French music and embroidery. Here is a handkerchief on which I've embroidered your initials. Well, thank you, my dear. Very pretty. Very pretty. Now, Roy, what have you to say for yourself? I have learned the multiplication table in the way you desired, Peter. Oh, let me hear a little of it. You may start with a second. Yes, sir. Seven million times one is seven million. <laughs> seven million times two is fourteen million. Very good. Let me hear nine times nine. Uh, nine million times nine is a uh, hundred and eight million. Hey. <laughs> Excellent, my boy. Excellent. <laughs> 
does my heart good to hear you recite those stirring figures. Have you had a hard day in Wall Street today, Father? Hard day? And my usual day of anxiety and care. I forced several railroads into bankruptcy. I compelled six banks to close, owing millions to their depositors. By tomorrow, I'm hopeful that with the help of a wise providence, I shall be able to force Jabez Hooker to the wall. By Joe, Cato, that's grand news. You're so clever, Father. Yes, yes. And at the same time, so kind and good. Yes, yes. Well, run along now, infants. Father has a business appointment with Miss LeVere. <laughs> that will do, Leroy. <laughs> run along, children. Au revoir, Father. That's great. Splendid. Pip, pip, Peter. That's English. I know, and I'm getting sick of it. <laughs> I don't know if he can stand Harvard or not. We did. I simply had to see you. Josie. Take off your things and make yourself comfortable. I can't. <laughs> Cliff, I mustn't stay. Oh, come now. Give me a little hug. No. Things aren't the same with me. Oh, now, Josie Posey, you tell Unky Wunky what's the matter. I can't. I can't talk baby talk with you this afternoon, Wickley. But, Josie, what is it? Well, I've come to intercede with you for Jabez Hooker. Hooker? I'm going to wipe him out, Josie. I'm going to crush him like an eggshell. Please, Wickley. But why? I, I never wanted to tell you, but... Jabez Hooker is my father. Your father? By an early marriage. <laughs> Spare him, I beg of you. He's a beaten, tired old man. If I mean anything to you, Wycliffe, don't ruin my father. The irony of it. For years, I've wanted to get even with Hooker. For years. But why? He cheated me out of a dollar and a half in 1872. <laughs> oh, can't you forgive and forget, Wickley? For Josie? Well. Forgive him. Let him keep his few millions. And then perhaps you and I. Josie? Perhaps we could go away somewhere. Just the two of us. On your yacht. I'd like to, Josie, but I couldn't. My railways, my shipping. I have to watch them like a hawk. I'm afraid it's like I've always told you, Wickley. You're a slave to your own fortune. As long as you're rich, you can't be free to live like other men. To live and love. <laughs> Why not give away your fortune, Wickley? Give it away? Oh, it would be such a gracious gesture to humanity. All your life you've skinned people, outsmarted them, driven them to ruin. People hate you, Wickley. They hate the very sound of your name. But, Josie, business is business. Oh, just think. If you gave your fortune to charity, everyone would love you. They'd worship the ground you walk on. They'd bless your name forevermore. They would? Josie, you've opened my eyes. I'll do it. By George, nobody will ever call J. Wickcliffe Gildersleeve a skinflint. Where's my checkbook? Uh, here. To the uh, J. Wickcliffe Gildersleeve Foundation. One hundred million. And no hundreds. J. Wycliffe Gildersleeve. Oh, Wycliffe, you're so good. <laughs> yeah, you bet. And there's plenty more where that came from. Excuse me, we don't allow sleeping in the library. <laughs> Who's sleeping? I was thinking. Well, try to think more quietly, please. Yeah. <laughs> uh, who does she think she's pushing around? This is a public library and I'm a taxpayer. For all I know, this library was started on J. Wycliffe Gildersleeve's money. Well, there's no costume in that ancestor. Nothing but a stiff collar and a stiff shirt. Let's see what else there is. George P. Gildersleeve, teacher. Samuel Mook Gildersleeve, photographer. John Whedon Gildersleeve, taxidermist. <laughs> Henry Morgan Gildersleeve. Henry Morgan! Say, with that name, he must have been a pirate. Town Clerk, Oswego, New Jersey. Shucks. Too bad about Henry. I'd look great with Leela in a pirate's costume. Boots, hot hat, cutlass. Oh, dear. Treasure ship on the horizon. All in the mainsail. Uh, hoist the uh, foresail. Man the forward battery and stand by to fire. Captain says, stand by to fire. <laughs> right a 
across her bows. Ready? Aim. Fire. Hey. Uh, yes, Woken Coggins? The sedge is all aboard, Captain. Including two prisoners. Two prisoners? Uh, <laughs> two prisoners? This is no laughing matter. I gave orders to spare no prisoners except the captain of the ship. Yes, sir. The other prisoner's a lady. Oh, well, that's different. Show in the prisoners. Uh, have the captain in irons and the lady in whatever she's got on. Aye, right, sir. <laughs> and uh, stand by to make him walk the plank when I give the word to Boson Coggins. Aye, aye, sir. Send the prisoners in the skipper's office right away. Prisoners coming out. Flag for two. One may cancel. <laughs> yes, prisoners, skipper. Well. Are you the villain in command of this ship? <laughs> yes. Black Jack Gildersleeve, that's me. <laughs> How about uh, introducing me to the lady? She's too good for the likes of you. Oh, now, Horace, to be sensible. Uh, this is Captain Horace Hooker, Captain Gildersleeve. I am his sister. Well, uh, pleased to make your acquaintance, ma'am. Just call me Blackjack. Now, see here, you scoundrel. I'll have you hanged as soon as we reach London. Well, on what grounds, Captain Hooker? Are you aware that in sinking my ship, you've broken Section 3A, Paragraph 7, Chapter 22 of the Maritime Law? You don't say. <laughs> I do say, and furthermore... Horace, please. We're not in a position to Permit me to handle this, my dear. Don't lower yourself by speaking to this scum. Oh! <laughs> but, Horace, don't you think he'll be kinder to us if we treat him as a gentleman? He's not a gentleman. He's a ruffian. I'm only a ruffian in a business way, Captain. But with ladies, I'm different, man. Believe me. What? Now, if, I, if we can be friendly about this, I'll treat your brother right, and I'll treat you right. What do you say? Don't listen to him, my dear. He's a devil. But he's such a handsome devil. <laughs> and after all, if it's the only way, I'm sure he'd behave like a gentleman. Huh. Uh, Captain Gildersleeve, if I can trust you to be a gentleman, we accept your offer. Fair enough. Uh, Bosun, belay there. Bosun on deck. Ready for us. Show Captain Hooker to his quarters, Bosun. What? You heard me. I told you where to put him five minutes ago. Oh, you be there. Follow me, Captain Hooker. I'll take you right where you're going. <laughs> I'm sure you'll be comfortable, Captain. Very quiet there. Run along, Horace. Don't worry about me. Very well, very well. Mercy, Captain Gildersleeve. All of a sudden, I'm nervous. Should I be? <laughs> <laughs> Certainly not. What is there to be afraid of? Why, I wouldn't hurt one of those beautiful yellow hairs on your pretty little head. Promise? I promise. Right ahead, Captain Hooker. Just a few more steps. Bounce away! What, what was that? I, I, I thought I heard a splash. A splash? Oh, really, it was nothing. Uh, possibly a porpoise playing about the ship. Uh, very common in these southern waters. There's nothing to be nervous about. Oh, I... I do so want to trust you. Well, go ahead. <laughs> I must say, your cabin is awfully attractive. So are you. You're from London, you say, ma'am? Yes, London. Hmm. What's your name, my dear? Amber. Amber? <laughs> Well, well, chop off my head and call me Charlie. <laughs> I'm sorry, sir, but we cannot allow you to sleep in here. Amber. Wake up. Wake up. No. no. Oh, so fat I can't budge you. You quit hitting me. Be lay there. My dear sir, you've been asleep for two hours. Do you realize that it's after eight o'clock? Well, it serves you right for having such dull books here. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> uh, Leela will love it. Belay there. Port's your starboard. <laughs> Marjorie! Leroy! Ahoy there! Oh, oh, hello, kiddies. Monkey, where have you been? Hi, Unc, what's up? Uh, sit down, Leroy. You too, my dear. I have something to tell you. 
Your old uncle has just spent a very interesting and profitable few hours in the library. That's the reason I didn't get home to dinner. What in the world were you doing in the library? Looking up the history of the Gildersleeve family. You children asked the other day about your ancestors. I can tell you now that you have nothing to be ashamed of. In fact, you can hold up your heads with the best of them. Because the Gildersleeves, it turns out, have always been a particularly distinguished family. For instance, it might interest you to know that as far back as 1736... Why are you children looking at each other like that? Shall we tell him, Lord? You tell him. What's this all about? I uh, got a letter today from Aunt Matilda. You remember, you said she knew all about the family history? Oh, yeah, she's always been a bug on that stuff. I thought you'd be hearing from her. Great old girl, Aunt Matilda, what'd she say? Uh, you better read a letter. Here. Huh? Oh. Dear Marjorie. Uh, writing's a little shaky. She must be nearly 90 by now. Dear Marjorie, I'm only too glad to tell you what I know about the Gildersleeve side of your family. Our forefathers settled originally in eastern Pennsylvania. May surprise you to know, if your uncle has not already told you, that our name is not really Gildersleeve. What? We are descended, all of us, from a butcher named Guldenslob who changed his name. <laughs> oh, Guldenslob, a butcher. Don't tell me I got to go to the yesteryear ball in a white apron and a straw hat. <laughs> For many of us, the war is over, but not for the American Red Cross and our boys and girls still overseas and in our hospitals. This month, the Red Cross is asking of the people of America $100 million to bring a bit of home to our men in Berkshire's Garden, Paris, Okinawa, Tokyo, and the many tiny Pacific Islands. Now, this is a gigantic job. So is bringing relief and cheer to our 400,000 wounded in military hospitals throughout the land. There are so many other activities of the Red Cross that to mention them would only take the time the craft people would like to use to urge you to dig down deep during March and help the Red Cross through to a smashing victory for our boys and girls everywhere. For disaster relief, for victims of war, for hospital care, club mobiles, overseas clubs, veterans' family relief, all these vital projects of the Red Cross at home and abroad are as American as the Bill of Rights. So let's do it the American way. Give your Red Cross solicitor every dollar you can spare, and you'll be giving to your very own, both here and overseas. The Great Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry. It is written by John Whedon and Sam Moore. The music is by Jack Meekin. Leroy, Marjorie, and Birdie are played by Walter Tetley, Louise Erickson, and Lillian Randolph. Shirley Mitchell plays Leela Ransom. Judge Hooker is Earl Ross. And Richard Legrand plays Mr. Peavy. This is John Lang speaking for the Kraft Foods Company and inviting you to listen in again next week for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. Ladies, here's how to give humdrum meals a sparkling flavor lift. Simply add some tangy golden Kraft salad mustard to your family's favorite foods. Kraft salad mustard adds a delightful flavor tang to sausage meats. Perks up those cream sauces you pour over hot cooked vegetables and fish. Gives an appetizing lift to egg and cheese dishes. And here's another great favorite with lovers of good mustard. It's the Kraft mustard with snappy horseradish added. That's two kinds, then, you'll want to buy. Kraft horseradish mustard and tangy golden Kraft salad mustard. This is NBC, the national broadcast.